Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm an independent medical device development and embedded systems consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Give us a call if you need any help developing a medical device or some embedded software. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at one of the new classes for the Serial Wombat 18AB chip, the Serial Wombat Matrix Keypad class. And it is... Uh, quite simply, a class that lets you read a 4x4 matrix keypad using eight, any eight, of the Serial Wombat 18AB's 18, 18 uh, I.O. pins. You also can run two, con two concurrent uh, keypads on two sets of eight pins if that would make you happy. The setup is very, very simple. You simply hook up four rows to four serial wombat I.O. pins and four columns to four serial wombat I.O. pins. Other than that, what we have here is the standard setup for a serial wombat 18AB chip. We've got a 10K pull-up resistor to on the reset line. We've got, uh, we've got pull-up resistors, 2.2K to 3.3 volts. There's one that's hidden here under the wires that you can't see. Uh, we've got power to the two power inputs. We have ground to the two ground inputs, and each of the power lines has a 100 microfarad capacitor. And then there's the 10 microfarad capacitor that's required to keep the core of the Serial Wombat 18AB chip stable. So make sure you add all of these components, your pull-up resistors, your capacitors. Otherwise, you may have some instability. You won't know why. If you haven't already, I'd recommend watching the Getting Started video for the Serial Wombat 18AB. It'll explain how to, how to configure this circuit, how to use your address pin, and most importantly, how to update your Serial Wombat 18AB firmware uh, to the latest version so that you get all of the latest features and bug fixes and things along those lines. You also need to download the Serial Wombat Arduino library. It's also shown how to do that in the Getting Started video. All of the documentation for this class is available on the Broadwell Consulting GitHub I.O. page for the Serial Wombat Arduino library. Uh, you can see the URL here. It's also uh, copied in all of the examples. Uh, and so there's a variety of different methods, and we'll be going through those. You may notice on our circuit diagram, we also have a, C a TM1637 uh, seven-segment LED display that's hooked up to pins 14 and 15. Uh, we, you can see in this related video how the Serial Wombat 18AB chip can drive this. I think the circuit's pretty fun because you can see that we're driving all eight of these column and row pins plus the clock and data lines for the proprietary TM1637 format all off of the two I squared C lines coming off this ESP01 module. So this is a great example of how the Serial Wombat 18AB chip is a you know great I.O. expander that takes this little chip that's really great with Wi-Fi but has pretty terrible I.O. and really turns it into something quite capable. Let's take a look at our first example. We will go under File, Examples, Serial Wombat, 18AB and matrix keypad, and we'll use the simple first example. Here's some explanation. You got you guys can read that if you like. Uh, it's a pretty simple example. We instantiate a serial Wombat 18AB chip using the serial Wombat chip library. Uh, we'll call it SW6B because we're using I squared C6B. We don't have any pull-down resistors on the address line. Then we instantiate a matrix keypad uh, and attach it to the serial Wombat chip. We start up our serial so we can see what happens. Uh, we start up the uh, I squared C bus. We'll wait 100 milliseconds just to let everything start. Uh, we'll call the begin call on our serial Wombat 6 uh, 18AB chip. And then we'll call keypad begin. And it's really very simple. Uh, the command pin, typically this is the same as the pin that your row zero is attached to. Uh, and then the, the four pins with the rows on them and the four pins with the columns on them. And then that's it. Uh, the keypad class inherits from the stream class. So all of the standard queue-based read commands like a serial port uses can be used to read it. So we're just going to do a read and the read function returns minus one if nothing's available. Otherwise, it returns the value. 
if the value is greater than zero, we're just going to uh, dump it out to the serial port so that we can see what happens. Let's hook up a USB to serial converter so that we can see what's going on and we'll make this guy run. And we can see here, if we push a button, it shows up on the screen. And the way the thing works, if you push the same button multiple times, it comes up. You don't need a different button or anything like that. Our second example is a minor variation on the first. We're going to add a call to one of the Serial Wombat Matrix keypad pad interfaces, the right Q mask interface. And what this does is it lets you give it a 16-bit binary number that tells it to accept or ignore certain keys in terms of queuing into the stream interface. In this case, we want to have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero keys come through the stream, but we don't want to stream A, B, C, or D, the pound sign, or the asterisks. So it's important to understand that the keys also have index numbers, and they are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Those numbers are based on their column and row position, not whatever happens to be printed on the keypad. And so the least significant bit of that 16-bit number is the zero index. So if we wanted the one, two, and three, this would be 0x07. This would also be 0x07. This would be 0x07. And in this row, we don't want the, the ones bit. We do want the twos bit. We don't want the four bit. We don't want the eight bit. So this would be 0x2. So the result is 2777. And that's what we get here in the right Q mask. So this will work the same, but only for the numbered keys. Let's prove that on the bench. And this demo works pretty much the same as the other one. We'll do one, two, three. When we hit the A, the B, the C, the D key, the star or the asterisk, nothing happens. But the remainder of the numerical keys work. So that gives us, again, some more options for creating user interfaces. And creating a front panel user interface is one of the things that the Serial Wombat 18AB chip is really, really good for. So hopefully this will make your lives a little bit easier in terms of creating your own uh, embedded systems user interfaces. In our third example, we're going to be taking a look at the Serial Wombat Matrix button class. This is a class that you can wrap around the Serial Wombat Matrix keypad in, uh, instance that allows you to treat individual keypad keys as if they are buttons. Those buttons are roughly equivalent to the uh, ones that come out of the debounce button class. And that's because the Serial Wombat matrix button and the cap touch and the debounced input all abstract from this Serial Wombat abstract button class and implement the same interfaces. We can do that and we'll say, okay, we're going to set up 16 buttons. We just call begin on them. You don't have to call begin on the button class. Uh, and here we'll just, in our main loop, we'll look at each button, and if it's true, then we'll print the number of that button index. And again, we're going by button index number, not the ASCII value that's printed on the cover of the button. Additionally, each button keeps track of its number of transitions and how long it's been in the true or false state. This is really useful because then it allows them to be used with the uh, serial wombat button counter class, which is shown off in the debounced input uh, video here for the serial wombat 4B, but it works for both chips uh, that allow you to increment or decrement variables. And you can see from this video up here, you again, you can create some really nice user interfaces with very minimal amounts of code. So let's take a look and see that in action. So we'll see how this works. You can see that we're streaming uh, zeros for the count change and duration on index 15. If I push a one, we, or if I push zero, 
we get index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. I could push a couple of these at the same time. And that works well. Note that this keypad scanner has the typical problem of getting ghost keys. If I hold down three that make a, a square, then I get the fourth one for free, which is an undesired side effect, but it's just the way it is with this keypad scanning. So you can see all 15 bit buttons work independently of each other, save the ghosting problem. On the 15th pin, I push it down and we see the end, the change count, which is the second number here, increment, and the duration that it's been held down is going up. I let it up, the change count incremented again to two, and the duration went down to zero. I push it down, the change count goes to three, the duration starts counting up again, let it go, change count goes to four. So if I just bang on it, you can see that I pressed and released it 18 times. The count is 36, one count for up, one count for down. So again, another powerful way to build user interfaces. Our final example is perhaps a little bit gratuitous in that it doesn't really add a lot to the technical discussion, but I really like the way it shows off the Serial Wombat 18AB chip's capabilities. The ability of the chip to really walk and chew gum at the same time, which is to a large degree the point of this project because it offloads all of that processing from your Arduino or other host chip. In this case, we're going to run an example that's pretty much exactly the same as the uh, the QMask example number two, but we're going to add a Serial Wombat TM1637 display. And it looks like I got to go back and add these to my keywords. But uh, the display we set up, and I'm not going to go through all this, but the display takes a print command just like the serial does. And so we can send the keys that come out of the matrix keypad queue directly to the display. Let's take a look and see that work now. And our final example, you can see and again, we're using that mask. As we push buttons, they show up on the display. So I hope you found this useful. You know, scanning a matrix keypad is obviously a very basic embedded systems uh, task, but I've tried really hard to put really good interfaces around it and anticipate some of the things that the users might want to do in order to build you build a user interface and to make those tasks a little bit easier, such as the button timing and things like that, by offloading those entirely to the chip and putting a nice clean Arduino interface around it that uh, takes advantage of some of the other uh, classes that can be inherited from. So if you've got any questions about this class, uh, leave me a comment down below. Uh, definitely like to know what you're doing. If you use this in a project, I'd love to know that too. Or send me some, uh, some pictures or a video to help at SerialWombat.com and I'll feature it in a future video. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. That's what it's for. And until next time, I hope you guys are having fun making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971 and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.